someone gave me a challenge in one of the comments the other day and didn't think that I would do it, but I did because I'm always up for the challenge. So since it's the weekend and viewership, viewership is a little bit more quiet then, this is for you loyal followers and you will know what this is all about. Stay tuned. Okay, now I'm gonna do the silliest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I'm going to do my dinner because my company that we're supposed to buy the sheep didn't show up. So I got some time here and I've got some other people coming at 4.30, which is like in 40 minutes. So I thought that's gonna run right into dinner time. So I'd start this hamburger hash recipe that Mary Wilson sent that was like pretty well straightforward and very simple as you can see not too much involved there we need uh, ground beef browned crumbled large pan with a lid some onion flakes raw potatoes uh, cut into small cubes um, soy sauce water that's about it like can't get much more simple than that but I can't ever do a recipe without adding stuff. So I had to use ground beef today because it had been sitting in the fridge for a couple of days and it can't sit there any longer. So that's why I thought I'd do that. But I also had a little bit of an onion left. So I thought I'd add that to it because they wanted dry onion flakes. So I'm gonna add that in as well. And I also had some red pepper, which I'm also going to add into it because I feel really guilty if I don't eat vegetables and to me potatoes are not enough vegetables so I'm just gonna chop the red pepper I would have used a green pepper but I didn't have any so I'm gonna use red pepper which are probably better for you anyway and I figured red peppers go well with ground beef and onions anyway and soy sauce kind of like a Chinese thing so I figured it would work. At the end, I'm going to do a little taste test. I may even add in something else. Um, like I say, uh, especially with my blood pressure and stuff like that, I feel like I want to eat as many vegetables as possible. And I actually do eat a lot of vegetables. But at my age, with my genetic history, I want to make sure that I eat as many as possible. So we got all that chopped up. Isn't that special? I got the ground beef in here. So normally I would use a frying pan for that, but it needed a lid and my big frying pans don't have lids. So this is a Dutch oven, I guess it's called, and I'm gonna use that instead. And I had a big package of lean, extra lean ground beef. So I'm gonna take a little bit off because tomorrow I'll probably make some Mexican pizzas. And so I like to have some cooked ground beef to do them. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow with leftovers. And now I gotta peel some potatoes to put in there. So even though I got extra lean ground beef, there is still tons and tons, I don't know if you can see that, tons and tons of grease in there. So what I do is this is where the dogs get a treat. I've got their dry dog food here and I just pour the gravy into their bowls without trying to lose any of that meat and the dogs love it when this happens all the animals at our place are totally spoiled so here's my history with cooking 
I was raised by a stay-at-home mom and she did not want us, I have a sister too, she did not want us getting in the way when she was cooking. So when I finally left home um, and got my own apartment and stuff, I had never cooked anything in my entire life. I haven't, hadn't even cooked an egg or anything. So it was a few years of disasters, which were really quite funny. And since then, you kind of learn how to do things by failing. So that's my history. But because I was raised with no instructions whatsoever, like not even the tiniest tips, um, I have severe insecurities about my cooking because I feel like I do everything wrong and yeah, I'm insecure about it. I don't like to have people over for dinner and stuff like that because I feel like I'm not doing it right. It's not going to taste good. It's going to fail. It's kind of weird because actually now my food usually tastes pretty good. <laughs> and Artie isn't a real judge on it because he likes everything just about. Like, I'm very lucky that way. Like, if you put it in front of it and it's food, he'll eat it. Um, but recently with COVID and stuff, we've been doing a lot more eating in than going out for meals. And I'm at the point now where most of the meals we go eat out are worse than the meals I'm cooking at home. So I must be improving somewhat. Either that or I'm totally used to my own stuff. But I do a lot of substitutions because you do learn that, especially in the country, if you don't have the ingredients at hand, it's not like you can just go to the corner store and pick up the ingredients. It's a half hour drive to our grocery store. So like in this recipe, um, she's calling for onion flakes. I don't have those. Um, so I do have the onion which I've chopped up and actually I'm going to toss that in there now with the ground beef and I'm going to toss the peppers in which she also didn't call for but I think, I think from experience these will all go together and it will just make me feel a little happier that I had some vegetables in there as well stir that up. It's just simmering there. The dog's hot gravy and oil is sitting in their dog poop bowls for later. I've taken out a bunch of ground beef and I'm straining the oil off it here. I'll put that in a plastic bag for tomorrow's Mexican pizzas. And now I just have to, I guess, peel these potatoes into little one inch cubes and put a lid on that, get the, actually, yeah, I forgot I had to get the soy sauce. I didn't have any of that either, but I did remember to buy some. So, not much for measuring anymore. When I was younger, everything got measured. everything is childproof which makes it difficult for menopausal women because child and menopause are kind of similar so we're going to sprinkle some of that in here like I say I don't measure I'll see how it looks I didn't have onion flakes, but hey, I had Knorr onion soup mix with the little flakes in it. So since I had this and the real onions, I thought that would work. And she just wanted a little bit of water added in.
Okay, while I peel the potatoes, I'll let that stuff simmer. And after the potatoes, I guess we have to wait an hour to an hour and a half, which should work out perfectly because I've got the visitors coming to talk to us about a project we may or may not be doing. And by the time they're done, this should be ready. So the potatoes I have right now are yellow potatoes. They're supposed to be a little better for you, nutrition wise. I know you can leave the skins on if you want, but Arnie actually prefers skin off. So I aim to please. These are really little potatoes, which are kind of annoying. But they're done. those rinsed off and we'll just chop these off, up into little cubes but another good thing about being married to a big guy is that rarely is there anything left over, even when I think I've cooked too much? It's kind of like having a pet dog, you know? You, if you have leftovers, you can kind of give it to them. Arnie, basically, anything I can't finish, I've yet to see when he can't finish it off for me. <laughs> so, we'll see if how this works out. I actually put them in about half inch cubes, more bite size. And we're gonna toss them in. It actually smells really good. sprinkle a little bit more of this in. How much did she say? The recipe said, oh, three tablespoons. Yeah, I definitely didn't put three tablespoons. And she said, how much water? Half a cup. Might put a little more water too. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm just going to simmer that on two here. And it smells pretty good. And I think the onions and the red peppers give it some color. So it's looking good too. We'll put the lid on it. And I'm going to put the timer on for... Uh, 90 minutes and we'll keep checking on it see how it does and I'll show you when it's finished this is just hilarious for me in the meantime here's the ground beef and the dogs dinners they'll be happy and I'll get something for the ground beef now okay so I've got the leftover ground beef in here so I can use that for my meal tomorrow 
Things are always handier if I can get more than one meal out of something I'm using. So that's my fridge. <laughs> so um, I guess that's it for that meal. It was pretty simple. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And then I'll tell you if it worked out or not and if it's something that we're likely to cook again, because you never know. But as you do all know, I have tons of zucchini growing right now. And I can see very quickly I'm gonna be inundated with zucchini. I do have a really good recipe for zucchini, eggplants, and tomatoes that I serve with rice. It's a really nice one, and I put chicken with it. Um, but I'm gonna be looking for more meals with zucchini. Like I have a zucchini bread or a zucchini loaf and zucchini cake. I'm trying to lose some weight, so I will be making those things, but I'm looking for dinners. So if anyone has anything that you can make with zucchini that's dinnerish, be sure to let us know. <laughs> Okay, so I, I'm now totally bastardizing that recipe because I couldn't stand it. I was cleaning up and thought, what other vegetables could I put in there? And I thought, just the soy sauce thing made me think Chinese kind of. So I thought, you know, I got carrots. Carrots are good for you. I could throw them in there and it wouldn't change the whole thing totally, but it would add some more vegetables and nutrition in there for me. So, yeah, I do this with everything. If, uh, if I think I can add something to it, I will. Especially when I got stuff in the fridge that really needs to be eaten up. So we're gonna toss some carrots in there while we're still at the beginning and have time to get these all cooked up. And the only color that was really missing now at this point was green. And I thought I'd stick in some frozen peas, but you know, I had a lot of broccoli. So just a wee bit of broccoli is gonna go in there too. I might throw the broccoli in a little later though because I don't want it to overcook and it's gonna be in there quite a while. So I'll just leave that sit there. But I can most definitely toss, toss the carrots in. So I go to show you one recipe and I completely change it. And someone who gives me their recipe and I do this to it, you're probably gonna be insulted. <laughs> but I do like one pot. One pot things are so much better because we don't have a dishwasher. Dishwasher is me. So this is a lot nicer for me when it's all in one pot. And yeah, it does smell good. We'll see how it does. So our visitors left and now it's time to try Mary's adjusted recipe. What is it? Well, it started off as Mary's recipe and I didn't think it had enough vegetables, so I added vegetables. And now we're going to try it. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Does uh, it smell good? Yeah. There it is. We're going to give it a try. And we'll have Arnie's review when we're done. So we're just having coffee now after having our supper. And Arnie's going to give his assessment of Mary's modified hamburger hash. So Arnie, how was it? First thing I want to talk about, the eye contact. See, I'm looking. 
The meal was excellent. Liked it a lot. I had no problem with it. It was was it Mary? Yep. Mary, it was a great dish. But I have to say, Lynn put a couple extras in there, and Lynn even made it better. You know why? Because I gotta sleep with Lynn, I don't have to sleep with Mary. So I gotta watch what I say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very funny, Arnie. What? Thank you very much, Mary. It was a extremely good gesture and a nice meal. It was quick and, and easy. And Lynn, Lynn didn't finish her meal because she put too much on her plate. And what happened with the leftovers? The human vacuum cleaner. Came <laughs> so from Arnie and Lynn, I hope you enjoyed cooking with Lynn. <laughs> 101. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow for more sheep videos. Bye for now.